latest episode of the Drum Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Right, this afternoon, what we're we looking at? Well, right, thought it was a bad time we looked at some expensive whiskies. Right, uber expensive whiskies in actual fact. Um, whiskies over 200 quid. Hmm, are they really worth it? That, of course, is the question. Now, distilleries and independent bottlers will, you know, often release, um, yeah, old expressions um, of um, you know either hard to find whiskies you know from distilleries that have long since gone and they, they will have you know a pretty steep price tag and you know I suppose for your, your average your average punter you know you look at a whiskey and you think you know that's expensive is it really worth it and of course like with everything in life you know um, just because it's old and maybe rare doesn't necessarily mean it's it's worth the worth the price tag but um, Sometimes, you know, um, it, it is indeed, you know, the spirit is definitely worth the price tag. So, what am I, yeah, waff, waffling on about? Well, um, right, well, we've got three whiskies here uh, in front of me, um, two of which were, again, samples from uh, the 2003 World Whiskey Awards, uh, one of which uh, isn't, uh, wasn't entered into the competition, which was a bit of a shame, probably, uh, it may well have wiped the floor with everything else. But anyway, uh, enough of that. Um, each of these three three bottlings is going to cost you over two hundred pounds, um, and you know, this is this is going to be hopefully an awesome tasting, and hopefully will uh, um, explain one of the reasons why some of these bottlings, you know, have these kind of price tags, and well, we'll see whether they're worth it. So, um, without much further ado, let me uh, introduce uh, this afternoon's uh, little lineup for you. Right, okay, so we're going to kick off with this one. Uh, not an awful lot left in this one, but I didn't really get an awful lot of it, yeah. <laughs> sample-wise, when uh, when you consider that it's retail price. This is uh, the, the most recently released Bunnahaven 25-year-old bottled at 46.3%, um, with a price tag close to £230. Comes in a nice little wooden box and what have you, but... Um, is it actually worth it? Well, that's a very good question. Um, it will be interesting to see. I mean, um, as you know, Bunhaven likes to use you know large chunks of uh, sherry um, in their um, their bottlings, of which I've been slightly critical in the past. It has to be said. I think certainly since um, the uh, you know the bottlings were changed and uh, the the ABVs were upped. Um, to, uh, to 46.3 it seemed to me certainly with the 12 year old that uh, um, the elegance of, of Bunnahaven was kind of um, should we say sacrificed for the power of sherry I mean I've tasted some some wonderful bourbon cask um, old Bunnahavens and it is absolutely delightful and you just think well, why do you need to to, to, to to smother that with sherry but anyway that's that's by the by we're going to obviously look at this uh, 25 year old which incidentally as you can see from the colour well there's not a lot there um, it's, it, to me is, is if there is some sherry in there it's, it's very very minuscule and it certainly doesn't impact upon the, uh, the character this uh, sample is uh, the Balvenie 30 year old with uh, a price tag pretty much close to £350 I mean it's a lot of money um, Balvenie, well, you know, I mean, I like Balvenie. Um, it's it's certainly uh, an interesting whiskey. Um, you know, David Stewart, the, uh, the 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 head distiller there, is is doing some interesting stuff. Certainly with um, the uh, the twelve year old signature, um, and um, yeah, I've tasted one or two older expressions of Balvenie that have been absolute stonking. So it'll be interesting to see whether whether this is indeed worth uh, worth that price tag. And talking of price tags, this. This is the old Pulteney 40. The packaging is just absolutely sublime. Lovely box, you know, hand blown bottle, you know, silver waves across it, all that business. £1,400. Mm, lot of money. Um, yes, you're obviously paying for the fact that it's the, the oldest uh, expression that uh, the distillery has released to date. Um, you're also paying for all that fancy packaging as well but is the whiskey inside the bottle worth that price tag well <laughs> there's not a lot of this left um, I've toasted this on uh, um, a couple of occasions now and well 
without giving the game away too much. Oh, it's an orgasm in a glass, it has to be said. But anyway, we will get to that in due course. So, uh, um, without further ado, I, let's kick off with uh, the cheap, <laughs> the cheap whiskey in the lineup, the Bunner Harden 25. Not, not an iota of sherry cask in sight. Bourbon oat, wonderfully aromatic. Um, where do you start with a whiskey like this? It's, it's got that sort of lovely kind of tropical Aaron-esque kind of character. Kiwi, pineapple, apricot, little dollop of honey. I mean, this is just so deep. Um, little bit of spice um, and so a, a little bit of American oak um, giving some some nice soft mature oak vanillins little bit of sawdustiness um, oh but that's fruity that is absolutely sublime um, and you know I, I just keep saying it you know um, Bunnahabhan aged in American oak is just beautiful it has this lovely um, fruity, evocative character, and you just, why do you want to stamp on this with sherry? I mean, you know, it's just, you don't need to do it. Um, and, you know, this, this just goes to prove um, that you don't need it. You know, Bunnahabhan is a beautiful malt. A little bit of banana now, uh, a little bit of light toffee. I mean, this, this is just continuously evolving and, you know, absolutely stunning. I mean, you know, 225 quid, 230 quid, bargain, absolute bargain for a malt like this. Mm, absolutely gorgeous palette. heavenly absolutely heavenly again you're getting some slight crystallized um, tropical fruit apple apricot a little bit of pear banana pineapple mouth filling slightly spicy some lovely juicy lightly dried fruits um, some spice some gentle American oak, a little bit of sawdustiness. Oh, effortless. I mean, it is just so full, um, so expressive. A little bit of coastal character, not not a huge amount. A little bit of you have lift from the alcohol, cleansing. Um, yeah, okay. You can argue there's a little bit of dry woodiness on 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 the finish, but. You know, with such an exuberantly fruity malt, you know, it counterbalances that absolutely superbly. Um, that is just absolutely stunning. And, and like I said, when, when you've got a malt of this quality and this character, you just don't need any sherry. It's just leave it in a bourbon cask and just that's what you get. <laughs> Unbelievably good. Right, okay, and uh, right, let's have a look at uh, the Balvenie 30 then. Um, let's see what the nose gives us then. Oh, that's nice. Delicate sherry aromas, herbal, licorice, a little bit of toffee, some dark spices. But you're also getting some, some lovely oak vanilla some American oak, some lightly dried, slightly raisinated fruit, some sawdusty American oak. Um, mm, lightly perfumed. Oh, it's just, I mean, it, it's just such a wonderful blending of, of American oak and sherry cask. 
neither neither overpowers the other that you've got a lovely harmony a lovely maturity you know the dustiness a little bit of violet a little bit of, of dusty sherry spice mm, that is just stunning i mean you know i mean i don't hate sherry cask whiskey you know at all uh, i think sort of you know used in a judicious amount um malt aged in sherry cask can certainly add some some character a little bit of uh, piquancy um and some interest but you know when it's all blanketed with sherry you know it's just a, a real shame you know certainly when you've got a spirit that has this lovely uh quality to it you know you just don't want to do that you know Out then. Oh, that's so soft. Mm. Probably slightly more emphasis on the sherry cask. On the palate but wonderfully juicy very spicy lots of sort of licorice and sort of crumbly spices dried fruits and, but again you know a little bit of american oak is creeping through there with some sawdusty vanillins and again that sort of slightly slightly tropical honeyed balveni character is, is coming through in, in absolute spades um it's a real spicy mouthful. Mm. That is absolutely stunning. I mean, you know, that to me is just just shows you how good. Um, that is just the art of a blender. That is just the art of taking um, different casks, whiskey, um, and sort of putting them together to create something very, very special, very magical. Um, oh, that's just that, unbelievable. I mean, you know, three hundred and fifty quid. Well, yeah, I mean that is that's that is worth every penny of it, in my opinion. Um, and I think if you if you ever get the opportunity to to taste that, then um, I would do so because that is just stunningly good. Mm. Oh, beautiful, absolutely. Beautiful. Right. Okay. And finally, <laughs> Portly Forty Year Old. 1400 quid's worth. Let's have a look then, shall we? Dark, licorice, menthol. Oh, really, really herbally, mentholy, slightly bog myrtly. Oh, but the depth on that is frightening. Um, dried fruits. Um, but you know, again with that sort of little tropical nuance, kiwi, bit of pineapple, um, oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's just so deep. A um, little bit of coastal character, just to sort of like give it a little bit of a nip at the edges. But uh, so herbal. Um, Treacle. I mean, it's possible. I mean, it kind of um, the, the sherry sort of reminds me certainly of, of Pedro Zimenez with that sort of you know rounded, um, slightly sweetened, um, licoricey kind of character. But oh, that's oh, fourteen hundred quid. Oh, unbelievable. I mean, you know that little bottle. That's a hundred quid's worth in there. I mean, I'm just. I'm so, so grateful to uh, Inverhouse Distillers and uh, uh, obviously the Old Portland Distillery for, for allowing me to uh, taste this and share this with you, but uh, I mean, this is just unbelievable. A little bit of, little bit of marmalade now. Yeah, sort of Seville orange marmalade, you know, sort of... Um, I mean, this is the thing with, with great whiskey. Um, it just evolves. You just keep sticking your nose in the glass and you get something new, 
something different, a different aroma. Those spices, those spices are absolutely gorgeous. They're soft, they're sort of really crumbly. Um, maybe a little bit of cinnamon and coriander. Mm. Yeah, you could just sit here and you could just sniff this all day. I mean, it's just, just awesome, but I've got to taste it to let you know what it tastes like. All right then. just got so much going on licorice dark honey lovely moist fruit cakey sherry raisins sultanas um, oh, it's just got a lovely coastally finish I mean it's not not too salty but salty enough to just sort of like you know stop it becoming overly kind of flabby and sherried and oh, but that's poised the balance um, Oh, the spiciness of that. I mean, that is just unbelievable. It sort of, oh, just coats the mouth with this sort of lovely dark treacle. A little bit of violets, herbs, spices. I mean, you know, it's just almost, it's got it all really, it has to be said. Um, oh, I mean, a little bit of chocolate, a little bit of bitterness on the, on the finish. But, you know, it's just all so complete, it's all so balanced. You've got sweetness, you've got saltiness, you've got bitterness. Um, that That is just a great whiskey, an absolutely unbelievably brilliant whiskey. Um, you, you just can't ask for any more, more from a whiskey than that. It has, like I said, the, the balance is stunning, maturity, it's succulent. 1,400 quid. If only I had pockets deep enough, I would have a bowl of that. I can tell you that for a start. Oh, that's good. Like that. That's that's awesome. Ha! Right. Okay. Um, let's let's sum these up. Although I think I'll probably, in, in as we taste them, pretty much sum them up. Um, three absolutely stunning whiskies. Um, the Bunnahabhain. Like I said, you know, I keep banging on about it. Just forget the sherry. Just it. Sublime, absolutely sublime. I mean, you know, um, I, I love that. That is absolutely gorgeous. Balvenie Thirty, like I said, it's it's just showcases the the, the blenders are um, the, the perfect marriage of, of both sherry casks and American oak casks, and that's what you get. Give it a bit of time, and you know, oh, unbelievable. But you know, the the Balvenie Forty. I mean, if they'd have put that in for the World Whiskey Awards, that would have romped it. I mean, absolutely no questions asked. That is stunning. Um, you know, it's just one of those sort of whiskies where you just sort of like just, you know, you sit back, you you, you, you smell it, you take a, take a mouthful of it, and you just think, unbelievable. Um, and, and that's all you need to say about it, you know. 1,400 quid, you know. If your pockets are that deep, then get yourself a bottle of it because you will not regret it. It is just just such a brilliant whiskey, absolutely marvellous. So, but in saying that, you know, all three of these whiskies, you know, are are absolutely stunning. And um, you know, um, if you love good whiskies, and like I said, if you've got the sort of those kind of funds available, then you know, you can't go too much wrong in buying one of these. Absolutely amazing. So. That's all I've got left is a bit of Balvenie. Uh, I, will say, I will bid you adieu and say, I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode of the show. Um, I probably won't be doing another expensive whiskey tasting for quite a while, it has to be said. So um, I, shall, um, I shall say to this one, good afternoon. <laughs>